A government watchdog group is urging the Federal Election Commission to investigate Representative George Santos for campaign finance violations. The newly elected New York representative has already admitted that he lied about where he went to school, working on Wall Street, and even being Jewish and several other comments that he made. Now the nonpartisan watchdog group Campaign Legal Center is accusing Santos of hiding the true source of his campaign funds, misrepresenting campaign spending, and using campaign funds for personal expenses. New York's Nassau County District Attorney's Office is also investigating Santos for his false statements during his campaign to determine whether or not a crime was committed. Our next guest wrote an article in The Atlantic about how the New York suburb of District 3 elected Santos, even though there were some red flags and it wasn't just one group that ignored them. Steve Israel is a former Democratic U.S. representative from New York's 3rd District, the same district Santos now serves and is currently the director of the Cornell Institute of Politics and Global affairs. Mr. Israel, thank you so much for your time this morning. Let's start with that news of the day, the ethics complaint filed against Santos. Santos, what kind of repercussions could he face? Well, uh, thanks for having me on. He, he's already faced some very significant uh, repercussions. His own party uh, has announced that they will not support him uh, in uh, 2024. I don't know why they're waiting two years. I don't know why they're going to allow him to collect his $175,000 salary when they themselves uh, have conceded uh, that uh, he lied. He was a serial liar, made up fundamental elements of his resume. But the fact is that um, the Republican Party has announced he will not be renominated in, in 2024. Uh, and the people of my former congressional district uh, basically have a, a, t a placeholder as a member of Congress. As these admissions of lies were coming out, I mean, my first thought was, how did this even happen in the first place, right? How is he not vetted um, by virtually anybody, it seems like? and Or was he vetted and people just didn't care at the time? I don't know. What do New Yorkers think about him? You still live in a district. Well, you know, this is the, one of the most bizarre political yeah. stories uh, to impact Long Island. My, my former district, Nassau County, Suffolk County, Queens, was always kind of a sleepy district politically. Voters were not highly charged. Politics wasn't in their DNA. They were kind of, uh, most of my constituents kind of, they landed somewhere left of center, right of center, but generally in the middle, which is uh, how I governed for, for 16 years in Congress. This is just stunning to them. Uh, and um, there's been a, a parade uh, of constituents uh, who are now scratching their heads, asking the very same questions you just asked. How did this happen? How did this guy get the nomination by the Republicans in the first place? Uh, how was it that the opposition research that was done on Mr. Santos that raised red flags was virtually ignored? Uh, and how was it that the local media on Long Island right. didn't give this story the oh, attention right. it <laughs> Well, yeah, the local media actually did because months before the New York Times published an article about the scandal of uh, the local paper known as uh, the North Shore Leader, which is on Long yes. Island, they actually broke a story about his questionable finances and then the Times took it a step further. So why do you think it took so long for the broader scandal to even get national attention? Well, you're exactly right. First of all, the North Shore Leader, I mean, they deserve a Pulitzer. This, you know, is a, a, a fairly unknown uh, local newspaper breaks the story. And usually what happens, I, I used to chair the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee in Congress. And so I have a good sense of what what was supposed to have happened. A story appears in a local newspaper. Usually what happens is it then gets the interest of broader, perhaps more prominent, well-circulated media. In this case, the red flags that emerged in this story by the North Shore leader were for a, a very long period of time ignored or disregarded. Why is that? I'll tell you why. Because when Mr. Santos' campaign tried to use those stories against him, the prevalent view by other media uh, folks was, this guy's not a story, he's not going to win. Joe Biden won this district by eight points. This is a democratic district. He is not a story. Well, guess what? He gets elected and then suddenly, he is a story because all of those lies initially uncovered by the North Shore leader suddenly become more relevant because this guy is going to be a sitting member of Congress. A familiar story for Republicans, too, in New York, because, you know, we may have not seen the red wave right. happen come to fruition, but New York is one success story for the GOP. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So do you see a scenario where he is removed from office? 
No. Uh, the Republicans, with such a tight majority uh, yeah. in, in Congress, cannot afford a special election that would remove him from his seat, cannot afford a, an expulsion. They need to hang on to this guy, play out the clock until 2024, nominate a new Republican, and not have the headache of a special election that interrupts potentially their majority. All right, Steve Israel, former Democratic U.S. Representative and current director of the Cornell Institute of Politics and Global Affairs. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Okay.